I'll say one thing to start off with the nuclear radiation stuff. Keep it, like, as far away from your hub as possible. Keep it as far away from anything as possible. You can see right there, that is uh, where we store the nuclear waste. And that right there, are that, that's the reactors, obviously. And this right here is where we keep all of our radioactive materials. So just like our aluminum factory, um, our nuclear factory, or uranium factory, I don't know what to call it, uh, gets pretty much everything dropped off by trains. And in fact, we almost have all of these train stations in use. There's pretty much nothing here for natural resources, aside from oil, which we don't use for any of it. So yeah, we ship in all the copper, the iron, concrete, coal, cadmium, make all of the items that we need. It's just a little mini factory in here, you know? Nothing too crazy. All the basic stuff. It's actually a really nice little setup. I like it. It's nice and, nice and simple. Uh, then it's just a little further up here that we start with the radioactive things. Um, there's a little bit of uh, fluid byproducts. We handle it the same way here like we do at aluminum, just with a little pump. Super easy to handle. And so I believe it's uh, these guys right here that take the uranium to make the fuel cells. And those fuel cells go off to be used for um, the actual, uh, so I guess it's pellets to the uranium cells and then the actual fuel rods themselves. So it takes a couple of stages, but it is really simple factory building. Um, since we have uranium dropped off by train, sometimes we have a lot of uranium. Other times the uranium ore is empty while it's waiting for its next load. Uh, the pellets get used up on demand. And the uh, cells are used on demand as well. So we keep no storage of those items. Cuts down on the radiation levels. The fuel rods, however, we keep some storage containers of them. You can see it all right there. You just don't want to run out of these fuel rods, you know? Running out of fuel rods is bad. So we keep a little stockpile. But uh, they never stop crafting. Because if they stop crafting, then everything's going to back up behind them. And eventually what's going to happen is the uranium train is going to be carrying huge amounts of uranium across the map. That's going to create a lot of uh, random map radiation, which you don't want. So as long as we keep those fuel rods always producing... Never empty, but never full. Then the train won't back up, and we can minimize our radiation footprint. We apply the same principle for the waste. So we just store the waste in a large number of storage containers. And as long as those storage containers never fill up, then the train will always run empty, and the nuclear waste will always be contained. So we actually use the same train to transport the ore and the radioactive waste. We just have it, once it empties out all of its ore, fills up all the waste, and once it empties all of its waste, it goes up and fills with more ore. So it's a bit of an investment getting into nuclear. You have the whole water thing to deal with too. Basically just a whole ton of water extractors. So it's a huge lot of infrastructure to get it up and running. But each one of these reactors creates 2.5 gigawatts of power. So those eight reactors, that's like, what, 20 gigawatts of power? 
five, ten. That's a, that's a freaking lot of power, guys. <laughs> and um, once you have the basic structure down, you can scale it up super easy. So it's a little complicated, a little crazy, but a lot of fun. And I highly recommend getting into it. I show you guys this here and now because I know a lot of people avoid doing nuclear and um, don't want to deal with the radiation and the radioactive waste. It is a bit of a pain and you have to design some systems that you don't really have to design in any other part of the game. But it's a cool little challenge and there's a lot of ways to uh, go about trying to sort it. I mean, ultimately, you do have to store the nuclear waste somewhere. There's nothing you can do with it. You can't even put it into the resource sink. But each generator, each reactor, doesn't produce all that much radioactive waste on its own. So even those eight reactors going at full tilt will take like over a thousand hours to fill up the 200 storage containers we have. Now, 200 storage containers sounds like a lot, but, um, you know, if you're at this point in scale and you're building, like, you know, 10 turbo motors per minute and all the structure to support it, that level of scale is well within reach, so. Yeah, I love it. I think it's great. Those eight reactors making that 20 gigawatts, you would need, like, so many fuel generators to do that it's ridiculous what is it like 150 megawatts per fuel generator it would take you 10 to do one gigawatt 100 to do 15 gigawatts so like those a reactors do more than 100 um fuel jennies could do Guess you could overclock the fuel jennies, make them about 300, but still. It's, um... It's worth looking into, in my opinion. And this whole system we have designed will give us a lot of power. And it will, uh, hold itself up for probably longer than I'll ever play the save game for. Now, this is our 200 storage containers of our radioactive waste. And as you can see, it's nowhere near full. Like, we're working on the sixth container now. So, six out of 200. And if I, let's say, build another eight reactors to get another 20 gigawatts, I can easily just build another 200 containers. Just continue it out in this direction. I could build it vertically, whatever. No matter how much nuclear waste I store here, that radioactive circle, honestly, I don't know how big it could possibly get, like as far as the game mechanics go, like if we fast forward in time, like thousands and thousands of hours, like if we had like hundreds of thousands and millions of uh, nuclear waste stored, like I don't know what's the maximum density point but there's no way that it's going to reach even our aluminum factory, which is the closest big structure we have. The distance is, is so great that, like, we can measure how far it reaches right now just, just with our feet. And um, it's not all that far. So you don't really have to worry about the radiation covering the whole map. Like, while it may be technically possible, it's just gonna take so much time and so much power you can't really worry about it it's like running out of iron nodes you know there's over a hundred iron nodes on the map there's like basically no way you can um run out wow look at that and see we're already out of range and the containers are only just over there so like the radius right now is really not all that big yeah, I might get a bit bigger, but it'll never get so big that I'm going to worry about it threatening our factories. Definitely recommend, if you are going to set up nuclear, 
do it in one of the bottom corners of the map, you know? Or one of the top corners. Very far away from wherever your main base is. My main base being up here. This is as far away as you could get, pretty much. In fact, these foundations are right on the edge of the kill barrier. If you stand on some of those foundations, you'll die. Because it's the edge of the map. So, we're literally as far out as you can get. And, um... Over top the water, each reactor requires, like, an insane amount of water. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that pretty much sorts it, like, you know? Yeah, okay, okay, cool, cool. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that that's pretty much it, all in a nutshell there. I don't think there's anything further I could really say about nuclear. I think that pretty much covers it all. Oh,